I want to get into Tucker Carlson because yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, false equivalencies going on by some pseudo leftists. The issue here is not whether Tucker Carlson is directly responsible for what this shooter did and why I'm bringing up Tucker Carlson, which we're about to show, Ty. I mean, literally, the shooter's manifesto sounds like an average Tuesday on Tucker Carlson's show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the yeah. New York Times has literally shown that he has talked about this replacement theory over 400 times on his show. Uh, yeah. Yep. And Colin, let's just, if people don't know, let's just go through this New York Times piece because it's pretty nauseating. Uh, it's an interactive piece they did. It's kind of a mix of images, audio. We won't go through the whole thing. If we could start with... Night after night, the host of the most watched show in primetime cable news uses a simple narrative to instill fear in his viewers. They want to control and then destroy you. There's a lot of they in his jargon. In order to win and maintain power, Democrats plan to change the population of the country. This is how radical demographic change happens. I don't want to live in a country that looks nothing like the country I grew up in. They can embrace the issues the middle class cares about, or they can import an entirely new electorate from the third world and change the demographics of the U.S. so completely they'll never lose again. Democrats know if they import enough new voters, they'll be able to run the country forever. Dramatic demographic change means many Americans don't recognize where they grew up. As with illegal immigration, the long-term agenda of refugee resettlement is to bring in future Democratic voters. Illegal immigrants are the key to their power. The point is to import as many new Democratic voters as possible. The whole point of their immigration policy is to ensure political control, replace the population. This policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. Mr. Car Carlson also posits that feminism and gender misconformity threatens masculinity and contributes to failing birth rates. You see the creation of white male victim of uh, in the Tucker Carlson show. So, by the way, he also called Iraqis primitive monkeys uh, years ago. So, why I bring this up, to be clear, because I think a lot of people, including Glenn Greenwald, who I'm going to get to in a bit, are trying to basically do this whataboutism and false her red herrings and uh, kind of jujitsu and change the topic. This isn't about whether Tucker Carlson is directly responsible for what this kid did. He's not directly responsible, okay? Tucker Carlson was not mentioned in the manifesto. So let's get that out of the way. It's not about whether he's directly responsible. Is that, is that what, Green, is that what uh, Greenwald is trying to like? Oh, wait till we... Wait till we read greenwald's long unreadable piece uh, um, look listen if you can if you can say that trump was responsible for a lot of things that was going on during his <clears throat> during his um term during his tenure how in the hell can you change your face to say that rhetoric like this isn't responsible you know back in the day when i used to you know do what i did um i would always listen to certain rap music I could tell you when I was really out there, it was uh, the Ghetto Boys um, and Tupac, and it would get me in a certain mood to get ready to do what I was going to do. So, yeah, maybe I was going to do it, but that gave me, that put the energy behind my back to do it. I was in that element where I was doing that type of stuff, but I always I always needed that. And it was it was certain songs that I would listen to that would get me in a certain, a certain mind state and have a certain mentality to be able to do some of the things that I was doing. So you can't say that someone's constant rhetoric and talking about this thing and these people listening that 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 doesn't play a major part in them saying, fuck it, we, we I'm doing it just like old boy with Pizzagate. Only thing you got to do is put that once you put that out there, that, that idea out there, that's all you got to do. Everybody else going to do everything else on their own. Right. You're going to get somebody like old boy that went up in there with a gun looking for kids at some pizza parlor. And by the way, YouTube, just because your algorithm confuses yourself, we're not advocating for that. We're just mentioning No, we're not. Yeah. yeah. But to me, the important thing is not whether Tucker Carlson was mentioned in this guy's manifesto or whether uh, there's a direct line to Tucker Carlson. The important thing is the number one rated cable news host in this country who routinely gets over 3 million people to watch his show who literally Republican Party politicians, first they go to kiss the ring of Donald Trump down in uh, Mar-a-Lago, then they go to kiss the ring of Do uh, Tucker Carlson. That's how you advance in the Republican Party. For Glenn Greenwald or others trying to twist themselves into pretzels because they 
Tucker Carlson, I guess because they've been on this show, could shoot somebody in Fifth Avenue and they would defend him. Uh, the fact that the number one rated TV news host in America is literally the shit he says on television mirrors what a literal white supremacist um, killer terrorist just did in Buffalo. That is a major, major news story. It is a major, major problem. And it's not something to minimize by saying, yeah, Tucker, he does some dog whistles. That's not a dog whistle. That's a fucking 10 alarm fire. That's a 10 alarm siren, what you're hearing from Tucker Carlson. And it's not just Glenn Greenwald, by the way, twisting themselves into a pretzel. But these people are not stupid. Glenn Greenwald's not stupid. He won a Pulitzer Prize. He's done great journalism. But the fact of the matter is, it might have not, this Tucker Carlson might have not been mentioned in this manifesto. He might not be directly responsible for this kid. But hate crimes have gone up under President Trump in his years. And over the years, as Fox News, for a dark period of my life, I worked there. It was right wing. It was crazy. It's gone from an 11 out of 10 to a 20 out of 10 since I've left. They are literally stoking this invasion. Remember before the 28 midterms, they were ranting about the caravans coming from Mexico. This is, story. this is not dog whistles from Tucker Carlson. This is literally intentionally yeah. stoking people's fears, knowing that some people might carry out violence because of it. Knowing that for sure. It's like, it's like throwing the rocks and hiding your hand. Like he knows for sure that there's people that's going to grab a hold to this and something can happen out of this. Outside of, oh, this is what people, this is entertaining and this is what people want to hear. No, he knows that there's some people that's going to take action because they really, really, truly feel that way and he can manipulate them. You know what I mean? Unless you want him censored, what's your point about Tucker? This isn't about censorship. Free speech does not mean you shouldn't be held accountable for your speech. Free speech yeah. doesn't entitle you to endless, to endless profit. He's not exactly. entitled to, uh, you know, all the advertisers that are complicit by advertising on his show, all the guests that go on there. Uh, I'm not I'm not calling for him to be call, uh, taken off the show, but I'm, you don't get a pass when you literally are tossing out. I mean, not even racist dog whistles. You're talking about invaders here. Yeah, look, and and the other thing is, put aside the morality of it, put aside the morality. He's not. Correct. First off, when an immigrant comes here, it exactly. usually takes about eight to ten, 10 years. years. Oh, yeah, exactly, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's that's the part. Like, it's it's not like he's telling the truth. He's lying and he's manipulating everyone. But you know what? Another thing is, yeah, free speech is free speech. But you know what else is free? Somebody's response to your free speech. Just because it's free speech don't mean there going to be no consequences. And some people are willing to lay it all on the line. So he don't need to call us when they come to his house and they're harassing his family because he's saying something that's offended somebody else. I'm not saying this right, but I'm saying you can't control people's response to when you offend them, when you hurt them. Yeah, it's free speech. And everybody got a, 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 a um got 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 their own freedom to respond to it, whether they go to jail or not. And a lot of people are willing to lay it all on the line, just like that guy that did what he did because of the rhetoric that that Tucker Carlson and a whole lot of other people spew. Right. Like you, 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 you can't control someone's response because it's someone on that other side that can match that energy. Right. And I also want to address people. And Ty, you know this because you, you travel. You traveled with me for years. Yeah. I want to address people and say, oh, Jordan, you're making it bigger than it is. Like people don't actually pay like. It's mostly old people that watch Tucker Carlson and like white supremacists aren't being inspired by Tucker Carlson. Yeah. I have gone around the country for seven years. So to the people who sit in the studio, God bless you. I have literally interviewed at this point, probably a couple thousand people in seven years. Yeah. I'd say 50 or 60 percent of them have been right wingers. Some were nice people and they're not racist. They're just misinformed. Uh, I bet if, yeah. if, if there's a if there's a superstar on the right wing is Tucker Carlson. You may not know this, but if you go on the road and see, they all listen. They all love him. And by the way, they love Bill O'Reilly, who was doing the same exact shit before Tucker Carlson, before he got canned for 
all the sexual harassment and shit he did. So this isn't first with Tucker Carlson. This was Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly. They were all doing this in different shades. But I am to tell to say that Tucker Carlson doesn't influence the thought or behavior or actions of his viewers. When I interview right wingers at Trump rallies, at Proud Boys, this and that, I would say 70 percent of the time what's coming out of their mouth, you could you could track back to Tucker Carlson, Fox News, right wing radio, Breitbart. And by the way, you could say the same thing on the left. Yeah, it's uh, not, all talk, it's all talking points. You can tell because they you got motherfuckers in different states saying the exact same thing. These motherfuckers don't know each other. It's all coming from uh Fox News right wing, more than just Fox News, but that's it's all the same rhetoric. And if you're trying to say that it's not, then you're not even be on, being honest. You don't want to have an honest conversation because right. being honest, now you can say you agree or disagree with them, but to try to say it doesn't have any influence, get up out of here, man. Knock it off. Well. Let's start talking about honesty. Glenn wrote, I mean, I couldn't read the whole thing because it was so poorly written. Glenn wrote to me, uh, he must be, he must need back surgery for twisting this, this badly into a pretzel. He wrote after this Buffalo shooting, I'm not reading the whole thing. Colin, can we put up the part I sent you? Um, Glenn wrote, though it does not actually matter for the purposes of assigning blame, it is utterly false to claim that Carson's ideology, including on replacement, is the same as or even related to the views expressed by the killers in Buffalo or New Zealand. Indeed, in key respects, they are opposites. Both Tarrant, the New Zealand shooter, and Gendron, the Buffalo shooter, targeted citizens of the countries in which they carried out their murder spree. They justify doing so on the ground that any non-white citizen is automatically an invader, regardless of how long they have been in the country or, or how much legal status they have. Quote, it would have eased me if I knew all the blacks I would be killing were criminals or future criminals. But then I realized all black people are replacers just by existing in white countries, the Buffalo shooter wrote. To claim that Carlson ever said anything remotely like this or believes it's just an outright lie. Indeed, with great frequency, Carlson says that the priority of the U.S. government should be protection of and concern of American citizens of all races. Tehran and Gendron believe and explicitly say that any non-white citizen of a European country is automatically an invader who must be killed and or deported to turn the country all white. Carlson believes the exact opposite that the proper citizenry of the United States is a multiracial and that black Americans and Latin Americans and Asian Americans are every bit as much as a U.S. citizen with all the same claims to the rights and protections as every other American citizen. His anti-immigration and replacement argues, argument is aimed at the idea, one that had been long mainstream on the left until about a, about a decade ago, that large uncontrolled immigration harms American citizens who are already here. I don't even know where to start with that tie. First of all, go ahead. I, you know, I, uh, it bothers me when someone tries to be too empathetic. Like when they try so hard that they start saying dumb shit. Like it seems like. Oh, that's not empathy. It, it, that's not empathy. He's trying to keep his meal ticket, which is Fox News and Tucker Carlson. But go ahead. Well, I, I, that's what I think. Like since he's been on the show and he's felt like at least Tucker Carlson has an ear for a different type of thought, like they've become some some somewhat allies. But it seemed like him sometimes when you when you try to protect someone so much, you go too far. Like just because he doesn't write verbatim what Tucker Carlson says doesn't mean that it's not influenced by Tucker Carlson. Are you crazy? And you smarter than that. You know that. That's why I think it's either BS or you trying too hard to to like to have this uh what do they call it? This 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 diverse school of thought because of council culture, you just want to make sure nobody get counsel. So you're like overly just putting a two on the 10 with it. Like no, no one has to verbatim write his manifesto and what Tucker Carlson say. The energy is there, period. You trying to tell what, what Tucker Carlson thinks? Are you crazy? That, well, that last thing. that last paragraph, I, I can find videos of Tucker Carlson talking about blacks, talking about Asians specifically. Well, Even way also, back in the day, the whole, you know, y'all can leave if you're not happy. Well, I also have to say, 
What's amazing to me here, what the fuck does Glenn Greenwald think that Tucker, who does Glenn Greenwald think Tucker Carlson is talking about when he says legacy Americans? You think Tucker Carlson is talking about Mexicans exactly. as the legacy Americans? You think Tucker Carlson is talking about Thai? You think Tucker Carlson is talking about, uh, I don't know, LGBTQ people? If your country is not looking like it was when you were younger, what does that mean? Right. Because they never looked black. My problem with Fox News has never been that it's a conservative propaganda outlet. It's that it pretends that it's not. Mm. And my problem with Glenn, just come out and say, listen, as I've gotten older, my views have changed. I have a more conservative viewpoint. I still care about, you know, uh, spying and all this shit, but I'm more conservative. But do we, need, do, we need, do we need to say it though? Because that's what he's doing in his writing. I mean, you don't if you if you want him to say it, that's just for your own. Like you don't have to no, say it. It's right. My problem writing. is my problem is, and I believe this, and I think you know this. To me, silence is complicity. Yeah. Okay. Silence is complicity, whether it's about white supremacy or other hate. And talk, Tucker Carlson, literally, the great replacement theory that he is talking about that Glenn is prostituting himself to pretend is not about white people being replaced. You a quick Google search will show you this is about the white race being replaced. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is talking about immigrants invading. You think he's warning the Mexicans in America that they're being replaced yeah. by who? Whites? It is so preposterous and disgusting and disingenuous and shame on the leftists who, who whether to keep in Glenn's good graces, kind of mildly might tweak him. But won't you say he's literally playing dog catcher for white supremacist Tucker Carlson? That's what's going on. And you want to know something? Frankly, I don't give a shit if he's done great journalism in the past. If I did good journalism in the past, but then started playing footsie with yep. white supremacists, yep. I really hope people wouldn't be defending me because I've done some good journalism in the past. Yeah. What Glenn is doing, and people, as such as Glenn, by the way, but what they're doing is normalizing white supremacy by focusing 99% of their, their attention on liberals and the Democrats. And 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 uh, you know uh, uh, the warmongers of the Democratic Party. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, Ty. I think you could attack both. Okay. I think you could criticize the Democratic Party, which I probably do seventy-five percent of the time. I think you can. Anna, uh, call, Anna, go ahead. Yeah, I think you could call out uh, warmongers. Right now, the Democratic Party is trying to keep this war going in Ukraine. Yep. They're not trying to do any diplomacy. They're trying to continue funding to Ukraine while people in America are fucking starving. And uh, there's no uh, women. Uh, babies are running out of formula. Inflation's out of control. People working two to three jobs. Mm. People like Glenn, pretty much for clicks and profits because it's very profitable, have decided there's only one corrupt white supremacist evil party. And that's the Democrats and Republicans. I mean, Glenn has literally posted in recent weeks that the Republican Party is now the populist anti-war party, citing Marjorie Taylor Greene, because Marjorie Taylor Greene, another white supremacist, went on the floor of the House to decry that we're sending more money to Ukraine. You know what Glenn left out? That two months ago, Marjorie Taylor Greene invested in Lockheed Martin, mm -hmm. at, right as... Russia and Ukraine, the war was heating up. So wait a minute. The squad is performative to Glenn and others. The squad is performative for for uh, doing a, a sit-in at the Capitol to try and stop an eviction moratorium. Mm -hmm. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is somehow anti-war when she literally just fucking invested in Lockheed Martin as this war was going on. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ty. And... The, no, the that is, is, is frustrating. I get you. And the other thing I'll say, and maybe people didn't know this, Glenn Greenwald's not a leftist. He never has been a leftist. To, in fairness, he's never called himself a leftist. Uh, Colin, this is from 2015, his blog. Uh, he writes, 
to the rapidly expanding list of throbbing internal problems in the Republican Party, one could add, and it should be really placed near the top of the list, the dilemma of illegal immigration. And today's op-ed in the Washington Post by GOP strategist and former White House official Leslie Sanchez, in which she cynically and baselessly blames the loss of the GOP Virginia gubernatorial candidate Jerry Kilgore on his fervent opposition to illegal immigration, illustrates why the GOP has been so passive and fearful when it comes to dealing with this problem. And yet few problems are more pressing. Over the past several years, illegal immigrants have poured into the United States by the millions. The wave of illegal illegals entering the country is steadily increasing. The people living in the border states of California, Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico know this flow has to be drastically slowed and then halted. The situation is so dire in that region that the Democratic governors of Arizona and New Mexico were forced to declare a state of emergency as a result of the flow of illegals into their states and the resulting massive problems which it brings. The parade of evils caused by illegal immigration is widely known, and it gets worse every day. In short, illegal immigration wreaks havoc economically, socially, key word, socially, and culturally, makes a mockery of the rule of law, and it's disgraceful just on basic fairness grounds. So, Ty, appar apparently, uh, culturally, so I'd like to know what Glenn was talking about there who's culturally being affected yeah. by illegal immigration. But apparently Glenn is so worried about the rule of law when it comes to illegal immigration. But when it comes to a bunch of white people storming the U.S. Capitol, violently trying to overturn an election, and I don't like Biden, but let's just call it what it is, yeah. he won the election. Apparently a bunch of White people storming the Capitol to violently stop an election. He has minimized as overblown. He literally, on Tucker Carlson's show, called it uh, a protest movement or protesters. So illegal immigrants, that's illegal, and we should really worry about that. January 6th uh, supporters who, by the way, mo many people died on that day. My cameraman who was there almost had his ribs cracked and broke. Uh, that's, you know, that's overblown. Yeah. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at five o'clock Eastern time and Fridays at four o'clock Eastern time.